Hello and welcome to Flexibility Learning Channel. In this video, we are going to learn about basics of computers in according to subject, Introduction to Computers. This is complete lecture 1 of this subject. So if you are a university student, or you are school student, or even college student. This video contains some new information about computers for all the grades. Contents of this video are the followings. What are computers? Computers and its types, analog, digital, hybrid computers. Computers for individuals. Computers for organizations. We will study all these topics in detail in this video. So let's get started. First of all, we will see, what is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that is capable of receiving, processing, and outputting data to perform various tasks and computations. A computer can be defined as an electronic device that is designed to accept, process, store, and output data and information to perform various tasks and operations. It operates based on instructions provided by software programs and can execute a wide range of tasks, from basic arithmetic calculations to complex data analysis, communication, and control of various devices and systems. Now we will see three types of computers, which are Analog computers Digital computers Hybrid computers We will study all these three types one by one. First of all, analog computers. Analog computers are a type of computing device that processes and represents data using continuous physical quantities, such as electrical voltages, currents, or mechanical movements, to perform calculations and simulations. Analog computers work with continuous variables. Continuous variables mean physical quantities or data that can take on a wide range of values within a continuous range. Next is Digital computers. Digital computers are a type of computer that use discrete values, typically represented as binary digits, zeros and ones, to process and manipulate data. These computers are based on digital technology, which means they perform operations using a finite set of distinct, well-defined states or values. Next is Hybrid computers. Hybrid computers are computing systems that combine the features and capabilities of both analog and digital computers to leverage the advantages of each technology for specific applications. These computers use analog components for processing continuous signals and digital components for handling discrete data and performing digital operations. So this was all about types of computers. Now we will see computers that can be useful for an individual. Computers for individual use are personal computing devices designed to meet the needs and preferences of individual users. These devices cater to various usage scenarios and can be categorized into several types, each with its own advantages and applications. Following are the computers that can be used by an individual. Desktop computers. Workstations. Notebook computers. Tablet computers. Handheld computers. Smartphones. We will study size, performance, and advantages of all these computers. First of all, desktop computers. Size, desktop computers are relatively large and stationary. They consist of separate components, including a monitor, CPU tower, keyboard, and mouse. Performance, desktops often offer high performance with powerful CPUs, dedicated graphics cards, and ample storage. This makes them suitable for demanding tasks like gaming, video editing, and software development. Advantages High performance for resource-intensive tasks. Customizability and upgradability. Larger displays for productivity and entertainment. Ergonomic peripherals, keyboard and mouse, for extended use. Next is Workstations Size Workstations are similar in size to desktop computers but are optimized for professional use. Performance Workstations are equipped with high-end components, including powerful CPUs and high-performance GPUs. They are designed to handle complex calculations and simulations. Advantages Exceptional performance for specialized professional tasks, e.g., 3D modeling, scientific research. Enhanced reliability and stability. Support for multiple displays for improved productivity. Next is 
Notebook computers. Size, laptops are compact and portable, with integrated screens, keyboards, and trackpads. Performance, laptops come in a range of performance levels. Some are optimized for basic tasks, while others offer high-performance components for gaming or professional work. Advantages Portability allows work or entertainment on the go. Built-in battery for mobile use. Various sizes and configurations to suit different needs. Some models have two in one designs with touchscreens for versatility. Next is Tablet computers. Size, tablets are slim and lightweight, with touchscreen interfaces. Performance, tablets vary in performance but are generally suitable for tasks like web browsing, media consumption, and casual gaming. Advantages Highly portable and easy to carry. Touchscreen interface for intuitive interaction. Ideal for reading, watching videos, and using apps. Some models support stylus input for creativity and note-taking. Next is Handheld computers Size, handheld computers are small and pocket-sized. Performance, they are designed for specific tasks, such as personal digital assistance, PDAs, barcode scanning, or GPS navigation, with performance tailored to these functions. Advantages Extremely portable and can fit in a pocket. Purpose-built for specialized applications. Used in scenarios like inventory management and field data collection. And last one is Smartphones Size, smartphones are pocket-sized and highly compact. Performance, they vary in performance, but modern smartphones are capable of running a wide range of apps, including games, productivity tools, and communication apps. Advantages All-in-one device for communication, productivity, and entertainment. Portability and constant connectivity. Large app ecosystem for diverse functionality. Cameras for photography and video recording. So this was all about computers for individual use. Now we will learn about the computers that can be used in organizations. These computers are not the same as that of computers for individuals. Computers for organizations are specialized computing systems and devices used by businesses, schools, government agencies, and other groups to help them work more efficiently and achieve their goals. Types of Organization Computers Following are the types of computers that can be used in organizations. Network Servers Mainframe Computers Mini Computers Supercomputers We will study size, usage, and advantages of all these four types. First of all, Network Servers Size. Network servers can vary in size from rack-mounted servers that fit in data center racks to smaller tower servers or even compact server appliances. Usage. Network servers are used to store and manage data, uh, files, and applications that can be accessed by multiple users or client devices over a network. They provide services like file sharing, email hosting, web hosting, and more. Advantages. Centralized data storage and management. Facilitate data sharing and collaboration among users. High availability and redundancy options for reliability. Scalability to accommodate growing network needs. Next is Mainframe computers. Size Mainframe computers are large and typically housed in specialized data center environments. Usage Mainframes are used for heavy duty, data intensive tasks such as processing large volumes of transactions financial operations, airline reservations, and other critical applications. Advantages Exceptional processing power and reliability. Support for multiple users and concurrent tasks. Robust security features. Ability to handle massive data loads with consistent performance. Next is Mini computers. Size Mini computers are smaller than mainframes but larger than typical servers. Usage, they are used for mid-range computing tasks such as database management, scientific simulations, and running business applications. Advantages Good balance between processing power and cost. Suitable for organizations with moderate computing needs. 
scalability to handle growing workloads, solid multitasking capabilities. And last one is supercomputers. Size, supercomputers are extremely large and often consist of thousands of processors. Usage, supercomputers are used for complex scientific, engineering, and research tasks that require immense computational power. This includes weather modeling, nuclear simulations, and advanced scientific research. Advantages Unparalleled processing speed and capabilities Ability to tackle the most challenging computational problems Support for advanced simulations and calculations Accelerate scientific discoveries and breakthroughs So this was all about today's lecture. I hope this lecture was helpful for you guys. If you have any question related to this lecture, you may ask it in comment section. I'll see you in next video. Thanks for watching this video. If this video was helpful, do like and subscribe this channel for the following learnings.